before I begin, I just want to take this moment to glorify God for this opportunity that he has given me to be here, for this opportunity to share the word with you this evening. Amen. I also want to take this moment to also give glory to my spiritual father as well as my biological father. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, for this opportunity that you've given me. I know it's not given to many, so thank you so much. And also thank you for your presence this evening. Amen. If you weren't here, I wouldn't be able to share this message with you. Amen. Wow, God is good. God is good. Today, I want to share a message with you. A message about many of the miracles that Jesus did. But this one in particular touched me in a different way. If the media can please display for me, it's in the book of Luke. Chapter 7, verse 11. Amen. Jesus did a lot of miracles. In all his miracles, he resurrected or oh, raised three dead people. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 11. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain. And his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. Twelve. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the town was with her as well. I'm going to open a broadcast. You notice as, as Jesus was coming, he was with a large crowd. And as this woman was going to bury a son... She was with a large crowd. Amen. There's sometimes in life, beloved, when you have a problem, people are going to be there. When you have a problem, there's people going to be mocking you. Some are just there to watch you in pain. Some are just there to see you suffer. But when your solution comes as well, people are going to be there. They're going to be there to witness. They were mocking you before. They were talking behind your back before. They were saying you won't succeed before. They were saying all sort of things. Maybe they are there saying, oh, we are with you. But inside, they are cursing you out. Inside, they are saying all sort of things about you. But when your solution comes, the same people are going to be there to witness. Amen. Media, please continue. When the Lord saw her, oh my God. His heart went out to her and he said, do not cry. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Then he went up and touched the barrier. They were carrying him on. And the barrier stood still. He said, young man, I said to you, get up. 15. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. 16. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people, the word. Can you give a mighty hand to Jesus? Amen, amen. My theme for today is going to be the encounter. How many of you have encountered God in life? How many of you have encountered God? The encounter of God. Here the Bible tells us Jesus, he just came from healing a central servant, I believe a central servant, and he was on his way, minding his own business with a crowd of people. And at the same time, there was a widow. A widow was also on her way, crying and weeping, going to bury her only son, the only person, the only support she had. And keep in mind that she lost her husband. And back then in the olden days, you only have your son or your, your husband to support you. If you don't have your children or your husband, there is nobody to support you. So she lost a support system. She was probably wondering, what am I going to do? How am I going to survive? What am I going to do? She lost her only son. And Jesus was just walking. He was on his way. And the Bible says... His heart went out to her. Many of the times God or Jesus did many miracles. 
It did all sort of miracles. But this one, as I, as I was meditating, a revelation came to me that this story of this woman touched Jesus in a way that many did not. He saw the widow going to bury her only son. And he was like, I can see my mother. My mother is a widow. Many of us didn't know. I didn't know that Maria or Mary was a widow. I didn't know. But he saw that my mother is a widow. And soon I will soon be buried as well. I am my mother's only child on earth. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm also my father's only child. And I will soon be buried. He saw the woman crying. He said, don't cry. And beloved, when Jesus tells you, do not cry, he doesn't just simply say the words, do not cry. There's always a follow-up. There's always an action that follows. There's always something that comes. There's always a joy that comes at the end. The Bible says, it told her, do not cry. He went to the people that were holding the casket. He held the casket and they stopped. And automatically said, young man, get up. Young man, get up. And I'm here to tell somebody this evening, God is saying to you, get up. Get up. I know you are going through so much. I know the situation that you're going through. You feel like you are drowning. You don't know what to do anymore. You don't know what to do anymore. You have given up. You have given up. And the devil is probably like, yes. Yes, that's it. It's over for you. That's it. It's over. It is done. It is finished. Just go on your way. And this woman, she was on her way to bury her only son. At this point, you know, there's some people, they become in denial when they lose their loved ones. You go into the denial phase. No, I did not lose him. No, he will resurrect. No, he will heal. No, he will be delivered. No, something has got, got to happen. But this woman had given up. She was on her way to the destination. She was on the way to the place that was the right place for her to go. There's sometimes in life we're heading to places that the world describes as the right place for you to be. It's saying, yes, you are meant to be there. You are meant to be buried. You are meant to do one, two, three. Your business is meant to crash. It's meant to come to an end. But the funny thing is, little does the devil know, God tells me that. It is, when you, it is when you've come to an end point when I begin. It is when you've come to a full stop, you're like, no, you know what? I can't do it anymore. When you're like, I can't do this anymore. I am tired. I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to throw in the towel. It is when God says, here I am, the God of suddenly. He's saying that suddenly I will appear only when you have given up. I will appear only when you are on your way to the destination that the world has described for you. Suddenly, I will appear. The God of suddenly. The God of suddenly. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing in life. I don't know what problems you have. But I'm here to tell you that the God of suddenly, he is going to appear He's already on his way, but he said to you, I need you to be on your way. I need you to be on your way. I need you to just let me. Let me. We have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. We need to be sensitive to Jesus. The people that were holding the casket and this woman, they were sensitive to Jesus. Casket. They immediately stopped. If they were not sensitive to him, they would have said, what are you doing? What are you doing? We are on our way. We are busy people. We got things to do. We have plans to accomplish. We have things to go about. But they stopped. You need to be sensitive to the spirit of God. There are sometimes your encounter is on the way. Maybe your encounter with Jesus, it is there, but you are not sensitive to his spirit. Therefore, you're just going to miss him. You're going to walk past by him. Be sensitive to the spirit of God. Jesus was only on his way. The Bible tells me his heart went out. 
We all have different encounters with God. Sometimes our problem is you're trying to be like somebody else. You saw somebody else encounter God a certain way, so you start copying. You start doing the same things. Oh, I can encounter God on that street, but no. God is already in Snellville. He's already in No Cross. But you are busy trying to catch him in Lawrenceville. We all have different encounters with God. Maybe it's on the same path. Maybe it's in the church. But it's still going to be different. Many of the miracles that Jesus did with a blind man, it was on the street. With a blind man, it was on the street. But it required him to scream out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. With a woman with an issue of blood, it required us to move in God's garment. But beloved, with this woman, oh my God, Santa La Oh my God, with this woman, with this woman, the Bible tells me it's hard. It is not her. It is not the son. It is not anybody. But Jesus' heart went out to her. He said, I can see myself in your shoes. I've been there. I have been there. I know where this is going. I know where this is going. My mother is a widow. I'm soon to be buried. I can feel your pain. I can feel your pain. I know what you're going through. And I'm telling you, don't quit. Don't lose hope. Don't lose courage. Do not lose faith. Because I'm about to do something for you. I'm not only saying these words to satisfy you, no. I'm saying these words because I'm about to restore. I'm about to restore you. The Bible tells me the young man got up and Jesus gave him back to his mother. When Jesus tells you don't cry, which means he's about to bring back what has already been there. When Jesus tells you don't lose hope, which means he's about to restore that business that you may have lost. When Jesus said do not lose faith, which means he's about to bring something. Something is cooking. Something is cooking. When Jesus said don't cry. Don't cry. It's going to be all right. Don't cry. Do not cry. Your encounter with Jesus is going to be different. Your encounter with Jesus is not going to be like everybody else. Yours is going to be different. Maybe the problem that you're going through, it is just it. And he said, do not lean on your own understanding. Sometimes, do not lean on your own understanding. Just say, you know what, I am done. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Because many of the times, we, we keep trying to find solutions on our own. We keep trying to find the, the solution to every problem on our own. You see that you are barren. You keep trying to go to the doctors to do one, two, three. God is saying, oh, no. It doesn't work like that. Just let me. Just stop. I just need you to be on your way. Be on your way. I'm going to meet you there. Be on your way. I'm going to have an encounter with you that's going to change your life. Be on your way. Because an encounter with Jesus changes things. An encounter with Jesus will change your life. An encounter with Jesus changes everything. Be on your way. Just be on your way. I just need you to be there. I'm going to meet you halfway there. Just be on your way. Sometimes, sometimes the place that the devil is leading you, he think it's winning. He think, yes. He think it's winning. That is it. You are giving up, so I am winning. You are going to be buried, so I am winning. Your business is dying, so I am winning. But the funny thing is, he doesn't know that it's only preparing the platform or the path for you to encounter Jesus. It's only preparing the way for you to encounter Jesus. In order for a solution to be given, there has to be a problem. We always want happy things. We always want good things in life. We want success. We want all these great things. But there has to be a problem for you to encounter Jesus sometimes. Sometimes in life. The problem that you're going through is for you to encounter Jesus. And the Bible tells me in the last verse that 
after they saw Jesus perform this miracle, they were all in awe. And they started proclaiming that, oh, a prophet has come. He has come to save his people. The problem that you're going through has to give God glory. When you encounter Jesus, that glory has to go back to God. So sometimes God allows you to be in a problem. Do you know Job? I love Job. God allowed it to happen for his glory. The problem that you're going through will bring glory to God. He said, I need it to bring glory to me. People have been mocking you, saying all sorts of things about you. Your business is not working out. Maybe you are barren. You can't have children and people are talking on the side. And God is saying, I need to get the glory from this. I need to get the glory from this. And I'm not only getting the glory. You also are going to be participating in this glory. You're going to be receiving the healing that you want. But I just need you to just stop trying it on your own. Stop trying it with your own strength. God is saying to you this evening, let me. Stop trying it on your own. You've tried it with men. You've tried it with those sort of people. It is not working out, obviously. So just let go. Be on your way. Be on your way to surrender. Sometimes the, the reason why we're unable to encounter God is because we have not surrendered. God is saying surrender. Just surrender. Just surrender. And say, Lord, I am done. Lord, I am done. This woman, she was crying. How can you tell a woman that has lost her only support system, that has lost her only son, that don't cry in this generation? You're going to look at him and say, what, what do you mean? I've just lost my son. You're not telling me to not cry. We go to funerals all the time. And those that have lost a loved one, we're always telling them, it's okay. Don't cry, but really, can you tell me to not cry in this situation? Can you tell me to stop crying in this situation? But Jesus is saying, no, stop crying. I know why I'm saying stop crying. Because I'm about to restore. I'm about to bring back your support system. I'm about to restore your life. I'm about to bring back what you lost. I am about to bring it back. I am about to bring it back. So don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. And sometimes there needs to be a death before a resurrection. There needs to be a death. You have to die in order for you to resurrect. When we give our life to Christ, they say you die with Christ, you resurrect with him. You have to die first in order for you to resurrect. You have to step, take a step back in order for you to jump further. You need to move. You've got to be on your way. I know it feels like you're going backward. I know it feels like you, you are not moving, you are not advancing in life because you are not trying it by yourself anymore. You are not trying it with people anymore. You are not trying it with men anymore. So it feels like, okay, I am losing. I am losing. But little do we know that you have to go. The farther you go, the farther you will jump. Something has got to die. Before a tree is birthed out, a seed has to die under the ground. It needs to die. So whatever you're going through, sometimes it just has to happen. Sometimes it needs to happen. In order for you to grow, it needs to happen. In order for you to advance in life, it needs to happen. An encounter with Jesus. She had to be on her way. Now imagine if this woman was still at home been in denial, trying to find doctors to find a way to save her son or find ways to revive her son. She would have never encountered Jesus. She would have never encountered Jesus and her son would have never been resurrected. Her son would have never come back to life. So you just need to be on your way. I know it, it's not easy. I know it's not easy. It's not easy just giving up, just 
letting go, it's not easy. It is the hardest thing going through. But sometimes in life, you just have to have to. And Jesus is saying, I have a message for you. Don't cry. Stop crying. Don't lose hope. We've lost hope. We've become hopeless. We've lost hope in life. We've lost trust. You lost faith. The only thing that you could please God with, you lost it. The only thing that could connect you further to God, you lost it. And God has said, it's okay. You are human, it's okay. But I just need you to be on your way. I just need you to be on your way. Be on your way because you are about to have an encounter with me. You are about to have a change of your life. You are about to have something happen in your life. There's about to be a move. There's about to be a shift. But I need you to be on your way. I need you to be moving. The encounter with Jesus. It changes things. It changes things. It changes things. God is saying, I have assurance. I'm going to give you assurance. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the assurance that you need. Don't worry about it. The Bible tells me in the book of Deuteronomy that the Lord, he defends the fatherless and he defends the widow. It's a God that provides us the strength that we need. You know, I love David. I love David. Whenever he was going through a crisis, he went down on his knees and he said, Father, I find my strength in you. It is new that I my strength is restored. It is only in you. And I'm here to tell you that it's only in Jesus. You need that encounter with Jesus. Stop trying on your own. You need that encounter with Jesus. That problem that you're going through, trust me, only God. At this point, it's only God. If not God, then I, I, I just don't know. Some things in life, if not God, I just don't know. My father always told me that. He believed in Jesus in the hospital. When he was very sick at the verge, at the verge of death, that's when he believed in Jesus. Sometimes you just have to be going through that. God is saying, I need that glory. I need you to come to me. I need you to be here. I need you to have this encounter with me. So I'm going to allow that problem to happen. Because there's more with me. The Bible tells me that the future glory, there is more to come. There is more to come. And I don't want you to miss out my daughter. I don't want you to miss out on that. My son, I don't want you to miss out on that. So I need you to have this encounter with me. So I'm going to allow that problem to happen. I'm going to allow that death to happen. I'm going to allow it to happen. Because this encounter has got to happen. For my glory. And for your glory. It has got to happen. I don't know what this message is for this evening. But I'm telling you, God is saying it has got to happen. Stop blaming God. Stop saying, why me? Why not you? Stop saying, why me? Why always me? Why am I always crying? It is because an encounter is on the way. A change is on the way. Something is about to shift, but you, you just don't understand. You will not understand. That's the thing about human beings. We just don't understand. We never understand. We come, we're quickly to judge. We're quickly to blame. But if only the Holy Spirit could open our eyes and see what is coming in our life. If only you could see what all suffering are both. If only you could see what is coming your way. I love Jesus. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. If only you could see what is coming on your way. Jesus was on his way. The one that death could not hold him down. Keep in mind. Death could not hold him down. The grave could not keep him. He is coming your way. He is coming your way. He is coming your way. He's saying, I need you to have this encounter with me. But you need to allow it. You just need to allow it. And say, okay, I'm just going to let go. And just be on my way. I know it's hard, but I'm going to be on my way. I know it's difficult. I know it's not easy. I know people are going to laugh at me. This woman, she was crying. 
She was just crying. She was crying. I lost my son. I don't know what to do anymore. I just don't know what to do anymore. What am I supposed to do? But the people that were with her, they were probably speaking on the side. Oh, look at her. Look at how she's crying. Let's see how she's going to survive in this world now. Look how she's suffering. People are going to talk. They are going to talk. Just let them. Don't mind them. She didn't mind them. She was just on the way. She was on the way. She was focused on the destination that the world is just pissed in. That the devil thinks, okay, that, that is it for you. I placed that there for you. But Peter doesn't know. Little does he know that it's just creating a pathway for you to meet Jesus. It's just creating a platform to, for you to encounter Jesus. It's just creating a platform for you to meet the one that's going to change your life. You know, sometimes I'm like, the devil exists. Sometimes I'm glad he exists. Because if it didn't exist, I would have never encountered God. If it didn't exist, I would have never lived the glory of God. If it didn't exist, I would not maybe be who I am today. I would not be preaching. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? I thank God for you sometimes. Because you are pushing me closer to my encounter. You are preparing a road, a pathway for me to meet my Jesus. You are just laying it down for me. So therefore, the devil think he's got you. He's saying, Deborah, it's over for you. Deborah, that's it. You are not going to succeed. You are going to lose. You are not going to make it in this life. You, Deborah, you will never go forward. But the Lord is saying, oh no. Oh no, it is when you are done. It is when you say, Lord, I am done. Lord, I begin. It is when I appear. I will suddenly appear. When you say it is over, when the devil is saying, okay, it's over for you, I will suddenly appear. When he said, okay, that's it, I have won. I have won. I will suddenly appear when you've come to an end point. When everything else around you does not exist anymore. This woman, she was just walking in tears. Everyone else, that gossip, that talks, everything else did not it didn't exist. It did not exist. So sometimes you just keep moving. Forget the destruction. Forget what people are saying about you. Forget the gossip that people are talking behind you. But people are lying about you. They're saying all sorts of lies about you. That that girl, she does one, two, three. That girl, oh no, she's never going to say, look at her. She's now a single mother. Oh, look at her. She's not going to make it in life. She dropped out of school. Oh, look at him. He did one, two, three. But little do they know. Sometimes they think, oh, they're getting to you because you're silent. They're getting to you because you're focused, because you're just quiet. You're not talking anymore. You are just crying. They think they're getting to you. But the, the Lord is saying that I'm the one that wipes tears away. I'm the one that knows your pain. I know your pain. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to see you in pain. When Lazarus died, the Bible says, Jesus Christ. Jesus cried. Why did Jesus cry? He felt pain. When he see his friend in pain, when he see Martha and Mary crying, he felt pain. When Jesus is seeing you crying, he feels pain. The Bible says his heart went out to this woman. He felt pain. He said, I've been in your shoes. I've been in your shoes. I'm telling somebody this evening that God has been in your shoes. He's been through it all. He's been talked about. He's been betrayed. Have you been betrayed? Maybe you've been abandoned. Maybe your parents abandoned you. Maybe your friends betrayed you. But Jesus is saying, I've been through it all. So I am feeling your pain. I understand your pain. I am therefore telling you, don't cry. Don't cry. I am the God of the suddenly. He suddenly appeared as she was on her way to surrender. He suddenly appeared as you are on your way to give up, as you are on your way to lose faith. I've lost faith. There's a time I've lost faith. We all know my father is sick. So there's a time watching him in pain, I've just, I, I lost faith at some point. I was on my way. I'm like, I give up. I said, Lord, I, I just... I'm done because watching him in pain, it hurts. It hurts a lot. And I'm like, God, I, I just don't know what to do anymore. 
I'm, di- I'm tired. I'm tired of praying, but there's, there's nothing is happening. I lost faith. But God told me I'm the God of suddenly. And it's when you least expect me that I appear. It is when you said, Deborah, you are done. I'm going to appear. I'm going to be there. I am going to be there. When you said, I am done. When you're losing hope. When you said, I am done. Because God does, he doesn't want you to lose your hope. He doesn't want you to lose the faith that connects you to him. He doesn't want you to lose that. Because without faith, the Bible says you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot do anything without faith. He said, I don't want you to lose that. So I'm going to suddenly appear. I'm going to suddenly appear. In the midst of the storm, I'm going to suddenly appear. When you are drowning, I'm going to suddenly appear. When you are burning in the fire, I'm going to suddenly appear. The Bible tells me that. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. There's only three people. But suddenly there was a fourth person. The God that suddenly appeared in no matter what situation you are in. No matter what problem you are facing. No matter what it is in your education. I don't know what it is. But God is going to suddenly appear. I know it doesn't seem like it, but it's going to suddenly appear. When you're expecting it, when you're expecting it to happen, it's going to be like, okay. Just stop. Just stop. And be on your way. Be on your way. Be on your way. Surrender. Feel your pain. Accept the pain. Sometimes in life we need to stop being in denial. You know it's not working. Stop being in denial. That relationship, it's obviously not working. Stop being in denial. Stop trying to fix it. Stop being in denial. Just accept the pain. Accept that it is what it is and be on your way. And Jesus said, you're going to meet me halfway. Accept the pain. I've heard a story of a girl that told me at school. She was in a toxic relationship. And she tells me, I don't know what to do. I just, I don't like pain. I don't like to feel pain. So I don't, I'm not going to leave this guy or this girl that is hurting me because I don't like to feel pain. But God is saying, you need to accept the pain. Pain is part of the process. You're going to miss out on this encounter because you're still holding on to things that are breaking you. You just need to let go. Accept the pain. Accept that it is what it is and be on your way. And you're going to encounter God. God is growing on your way. It's going to be there. It is on his way. But this is a two-way road. It's a two-way relationship. It's going to happen. It's only, gonna, it's only possible if you are also on your way. He said, I am passing by. I'm just passing by. But if you are not there, you miss out on your miracle. I'm just passing by. So I need you to be on your way. The encounter with God. Believe me, it changes everything. The encounter with God, it heals the broken souls. The encounter with God, it restores what has been lost. The encounter with God. Only the encounter with God. Not the encounter with men. Not the encounter with people. The encounter with God. It will change your situation. So be on your way. Be on your way. May God bless you. Somebody, can you keep clapping those hands? A way that you will receive what your heart desires if you don't meet the Lord. Amen. I want you to say, Lord, I need that encounter. I want you to meet you. Yes, I want to meet you on my way. I want to meet you in my trials. I want to meet you in the storm. I want to meet you in my pain. I want to meet you in my question. I know you are asking yourself questions sometimes. Does God even exist? Can God even see me? Can God even see my pain? Does he see what I go through? I've been praying for years. Does he see? Does he hear me? 
I don't know what your prayer request has been over the weeks, over the years, over the months, whatever it is. But I want you to say, Lord, I need an encounter. Can the music begin to play? As the music is playing, I want you to speak to your God. Let it come from your heart. Hallelujah. Ah, when it comes from your heart, he feels it. He feels it. Yes. Yes. 